ASMR gaming news. Please hit that like button, sit back, relax, and let's begin. So it's Black Friday today, and a lot of game stores are having sales on a lot of their video games, so I suggest you check out GameStop and maybe some other retail stores like Best Buy or even online stores like Amazon for special game deals. Um, honestly, there's a lot of games to choose from that are on sale, so I'm going to try to snag a few copies of games that I wanted. Hopefully, they don't run out of uh, games and accessories and stuff that I was going to buy, but... Anyway, let's get on to the news. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. I ate a lot of food, and I played a lot of Fortnite. So that was basically my Thanksgiving. And for everyone that's not in the U.S. and that didn't celebrate Thanksgiving, well, uh, happy Thanksgiving anyway, because uh, even if you're not in the U.S., uh, it's something that we just say to everyone. <laughs> as funny as that sounds. So, uh, first piece of game news for this week is regarding Call of Duty Black Ops 4. So, um, basically, if any of you remember, back when Black Ops 4 was originally announced, there were a lot of vocal people on the internet uh, saying that this game because it did not have a single player, would not sell very well, that Activision was making a big mistake. Uh, there were a lot of journalists that were also very critical of these changes to the Call of Duty formula for the Black Ops 4 game. Well, uh, sales numbers have finally been uh, turned over. And let me just say that Black Ops 4 is one of the best selling games of the year and it's also one of the like i think i read most profitable games that activision has released in recent years so it may not be the biggest call of duty but it is one of the fastest selling and fastest to make money for activision so it's a very profitable game so even without a single player mode the game still sold way better than previous Call of Duty games that did have one, so uh, I feel like Blackout is the mode that everyone is like most uh, excited about when they play Black Ops 4, when they pick up the game. So, I, I think Battle Royale really helped revitalize uh, the Call of Duty series. Now, I was a fan of the single player Call of Duty games. You know, the campaign mode. So I was a little bit disappointed that the new one did not have a story mode. So hopefully in the future, maybe they'll incorporate a story mode in the next game. But I still like the direction that they're moving with the series. Uh, if you go on Twitch or YouTube, tons and tons of people are playing Blackout every single day. So Activision right now must be very happy with this decision they made to not have a story mode um the focus was multiplayer and i think they did they did a good job uh, with making this choice and everything so uh good on them i guess uh, let me know in the comments if you're playing black ops 4 so next piece of news uh kingdom hearts 3 so as you all may know i mention it basically every other week on the channel i am a big kingdom hearts fan and i'm really excited about their upcoming kingdom hearts 3 game that's releasing in january and disney and square enix have just put together a new trailer uh, to announce that development on kingdom hearts 3 has been 100 percent completed now so i guess they're printing the actual copies of the game and shipping them off into storage uh, uh, units around the world in order to meet the January release date in a few months. So I'm excited the game has com come to a conclusion now, or at least
phase this chapter. I think that they have some additional DLC story stuff planned and maybe another series after this Kingdom Hearts 3 game releases, but regardless, uh, I'm really excited. This new trailer looks fantastic. Uh, there's voice acting and everything. Uh, we get to see some alternate scenes featuring other characters. And yeah, I just can't wait to play as Sora again on the PlayStation 4, uh, fighting Heartless. And there's like a special teaser scene near the end of the trailer that shows uh, Xehanort, who is basically the main villain of the Kingdom Hearts series with all his uh, organization members and it's just really creepy and I honestly don't know what's going to happen in this game. I, I really hope Sora and his friends are, are alright but the combat, the gameplay in Kingdom Hearts is a lot of fun so I can't wait to battle tons and tons of enemies and level up and you know gather all sorts of like cool abilities and keyblades and yeah I'm just getting this game on day one because I'm just a big fan of the series so uh, check out the new Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer in case you haven't seen it yet it's really nice and you probably can hear some birds in the background I don't know what's going on uh, there's like a tree outside and <laughs> they're all like chirping away it's like three different types of birds uh, hopefully that doesn't end up in the video, but I guess that can be kind of uh, relaxing as well, so that's good. Okay, so next, uh, there's a rumor going around that Xbox is going to be having a disc-less version of an Xbox One. Now, uh, I previously talked about this, I think last week and the week before that there were rumors regarding Xbox, the future of Microsoft, but now some additional information has been released. So here is everything that we know that we know right now. Um, Microsoft in 2019 is planning to release an Xbox One that does not include a disc slot. Um, the reason for this is to increase the digital sales on their Xbox Live Marketplace and to completely do away with discs, uh, printing discs, selling discs uh, actually costs money and Microsoft wants to, you know, increase their profits but decrease the hassle that consumers have to put up with when they order discs or they have to put them in their console I don't know if I believe the reasoning, but that is apparently the reason why they're doing this. And it is going to be coming out in 2019, probably early or mid-2019. And it is going to cost like 100 or $200 less than the current Xbox One S model. And the reason for that is because it does not have a disk drive, you know, a Blu-ray disk drive actually costs money. And with the removal of that, they're able to sell the Xbox at a much cheaper price. Um, they plan on opening special, like, uh, participa participating shops. Uh, I guess you could go to, like, a GameStop or Best Buy. Uh, there's still no information on that, but if you do plan on buying one of these new Xbox models and you own a ton of disc games, what you're going to need to do is take all your games to a local game store that supports this whole initiative uh, for the new Xbox that's releasing. Give them your games and they'll give you download codes for those games. Then you go on your account and you download those games and they're permanently available digitally on your account from that point forward. So you basically give up the discs to have a di digital copy of the game. So that's nice, I guess. So people that have lots of games in their collections don't lose their games. But yeah, this whole, this whole thing seems kind of bizarre. Um, as I mentioned last week, the PlayStation 5 is rumored to be announced next year. So it's kind of weird that Microsoft is focusing on a new Xbox One model when Sony is focusing on releasing or announcing the PlayStation 5. Um, Microsoft
Microsoft is working on a next generation system, uh, codenamed Scarlet. So, uh, kind of a bizarre, unique name for an upcoming console, but we still have no information about that. Uh, maybe we'll get some next year. So, next year really seems like the the point when a lot of game companies are going to start announcing new hardware. And this new Xbox sounds very interesting. Uh, so I look forward to hearing more information about it. So it's still a rumor. Uh, some guy that leaked uh, valid information a while ago is the one that's leaking this information. So it's still a rumor. It's not confirmed by Microsoft. But a lot of game journalists and other people in the industry are saying that this is probably true. So uh, hopefully it is. I'm, I'm curious to learn more about this new system. So the game awards are going to be taking place on December 6th. That's about two weeks from now. And there's a lot of rumors regarding the game awards. Um, Jeff Keighley said there will be a lot of game announcements and trailers and stuff like that like he does every single year. But this year, uh, a lot of people, you know, insiders in the game industry have been saying that Death Stranding, uh, let's see what else, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, Tsushima, and the upcoming Sony exclusive game Dreams, uh, all three of these games are going to be shown and given a release date at the Game Awards this year, so we're going to get a release date for... Uh, Ghosts of Tsushima, uh, Death Stranding, and Dreams. So three games are getting a release date at the Game Awards. And the, they will probably show off a new trailer and maybe do an interview or something like that. So people are really excited about this, you know. So Death Stranding, judging by the trailers that they've released so far, looks really, really cool. So I hope that we get a release date for that game. Um, some new information... And the same thing for Ghost of Tsushima and for Dreams, which apparently is supposed to come out maybe early next year or something. So uh, it's going to be nice to get some information from Sony about these upcoming games. Hopefully, according to these rumors, if they're true. So next, uh, we have some news about Cliff Blazinski. Uh, for those that don't know, Cliff Blazinski, um, he's a game developer, creator. He, he's been involved with the creation of a lot of games. And when I say a lot of games, he, he, he really has been, um, he's more commonly known and famous for his, uh, Gears of War series. So if you like Gears of War, uh, Cliff Blazinski was directly involved with the first and second game in that series. It was like an exclusive first-party game that he developed for Microsoft back on the Xbox 360. And after that, he went on to produce a lot of other games. And sadly, a lot of them, including his most recent game, Lawbreakers, was a big financial failure. Uh, the game came out, and barely anyone bought the game. And... The online servers like completely died just a few months after the game released because no one was playing it. So um, recently on Twitter, he posted a comment saying that he's just frustrated with the games industry and the business and everything that has to do with creating games. And he said that is the reason why he's quitting games and is going to work on other projects other than video games. So. This isn't the first time that he's said something like this in the past. Um, even after the Gears of War series, uh, when he left, he said that he would be, you know, quitting video games. And then he came back, and then he said the same thing again, that he would be quitting video games, never creating another game. But this time, when he said he's going to be quitting, he seems to be a lot more serious about his uh, decision. So... Honestly, I don't know for sure. A lot of people online are still speculating if he meant what he said. But I think we should take his comment at face value. And he is indeed leaving the games industry. So, uh, kind of sad. Uh, Cliff Blasinski, you know, is loved by many people. He, he's worked on a lot of 
Epic Games, and Gears of War is a fantastic series that's still ongoing right now. Like, they're, they're working on a new Gears game and everything, so... Uh, yeah, kind of, kind of strange to just hear that he's quitting the games industry like this, but I guess the stress can get to you, and having your games fail is not something that you want to go through more than once. Uh, next, we have some fun news, uh, Castlevania, uh, the Netflix series, the animated Netflix series that just got a season two this year that came out, uh, fantastic animated series, by the way. Highly recommend uh, you check it out if you like Castlevania or if you like animated Netflix shows. A really good adaptation of Castlevania 3, the video game for the NES. Um, so, some news came out that the creators that made the animated Netflix uh, Castlevania series, apparently they are going to be producing a... Devil May Cry animated series for Netflix. So I'm really happy about this. Uh, I love Devil May Cry series. And they're going to be making an animated series for Netflix. And these guys did a fantastic job with the Castlevania animated show. Like the quality, the voice acting, the story. Everything was really good. So I hope they give it the same treatment when they create a, like, show for Devil May Cry, you know, if it's of the same quality, then I can't wait to see it, because it's probably going to be one of the best shows that year, but, uh, yeah, they announced this, and I'm really excited to see what, what they're gonna release, uh, it's still probably early in production, uh, but still really, really excited about this. Next, uh, Fortnite, uh, Battle Royale got a funny Easter egg, um, in Risky Reels on the projection screen. Apparently, Wreck-It Ralph from the Wreck-It Ralph 2 movie made an appearance in Fortnite on the projection screen for a brief second, uh, to which streamer come the moment. And apparently, people are speculating about a potential crossover between Wreck-It Ralph and Fortnite. Uh, th this wouldn't be the second time that Disney has worked together with Fortnite. If any of you remember, uh, when Avengers Infinity War came out, there was the special, like, Infinity Gauntlet event with, uh, Thanos. And that was awesome. So yeah, uh, Marvel is owned by Disney, or, I mean... The Marvel movies are owned by Disney, so it would be, you know, very likely that Disney, after that event was a success, they contacted, you know, the Fortnite uh, Epic Games developers again and asked if they could do a special event for Wreck-It Ralph. So I'm wondering if there's going to be something uh, next season regarding Wreck-It Ralph and Fortnite. Uh, so, or maybe it's just a small Easter egg cameo and that's it, and there's not going to be a crossover, but either way, it's still pretty cool. And I need to go watch that new Wreck-It Ralph movie because I really enjoyed the first one, so just a little bit of Fortnite news this week. Next, No Man's Sky uh, has a new, like, Visions update. Yes, it has yet another big update. That adds a lot of, like, community modes. Uh, apparently, there's going to be, like, a joint community quest log of sorts where people that are playing No Man's Sky will be able to participate in the exact same quest for a goal or something, and it looks really interesting. Apparently, the new update also makes it easier to have, like, more planet variation so planets look more unique and different from each other, so that's really nice. So, kind of crazy how No Man's Sky, years after it released, is still getting updated, and the updates are really, really nice. So, I'm loving this. Uh, good job, guys. Uh, great developers. Uh, next, Super Mario Odyssey, an, a game that also came out a while ago. Uh has two new costumes that were recently updated and added into the game. Uh, 8-bit Super Mario, so an 8-bit version of Super Mario costume is av available in the game now. And a Santa Claus outfit for 
for Super Mario, so if you want to put a Santa outfit or an 8-bit outfit on Mario in Super Mario Odyssey, uh, you can now do that, so that's pretty cool. I like how Nintendo is continuously supporting the game. Honestly, they do this with all their games, you know, the game comes out, and a few months later they update it with something new, just to give the fans something to keep playing and enjoying the game with, so that's really nice on Nintendo, I like that about them. And lastly, Warframe has now officially launched on Nintendo Switch. So, it was announced a while ago uh, that it would be coming out for the Switch, and people were excited, and the game is released now, and uh, it's available in all regions, and according to some reviews that I've checked out on YouTube, the game actually runs and looks pretty good for the most part, you know? It's a slightly downgraded version of Warframe, uh, you know, they had to tone down some of the textures and graphics and, you know, other settings, but the game still looks good, and it still plays good, so I'm gonna download this game. I don't know how big it is on the Switch, uh, the file size, but I'm curious to check out Warframe for myself and just see how the game is like. I know some of you on the channel actually play Warframe on uh, your PS4, so if you have any tips, uh, leave them in the comments below, because I'm gonna be starting the game out for the first time. And I honestly don't know anything about this game, except from what I've heard from friends that have played Warframe a lot, so, uh, I might do a video, I'm not sure, uh, I'll, I'll see, I'll see how I, how I enjoy it and like the game first once I install it, but hopefully I have enough space to do that. Anyway, that is all the major gaming news this week. So, I hope you all enjoyed listening or watching this ASMR gaming news video. Uh, please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let me know what your favorite piece of news was this week in the comments below. I'm curious to hear what everyone uh, enjoyed hearing about the most. And, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll have a new ASMR gaming video out very soon. And I will see you all next time. So long.